I'm Lydia Ice, I don't have a PhD, so I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but you could call me prof if you want to. <laughs> um, uh, I teach accounting information systems that to accounting students, which is the computer course for the BCom accounting students that has to become CAs later. Um, I have approximately 200 students per year, and it is a year course. Um, there's lots of things one can say about this, as I mean, this is the 11th colloquium, and we have lots of speakers for each colloquium, so. Uh, the two main drivers for me um, stem from the need for the students to have a theoretical knowledge as well as a practical knowledge. They have to learn how to use computers. Um, I use uh, Excel, Excel and Word and the Microsoft packages and they have to learn to use an accounting information system package like Bastel. Um, and there's different teaching that goes with that. The theory um, can go over with the lecture, or like you had the problem with, there's not enough base knowledge, um, and the practical has to be applied. Well, the theory also has to be applied to a certain level um, that is satisfactory for the exam and the development of the student. Uh, I use on Canva, I use the announcements, the course resources, the test and quizzes, the discussion board, the tutor management. Uh, just quickly for tutor management, I load the tutors as um, guests on my Canva website. So they have, they are aware of all the communication that goes through to the students and they know if I change a class or if I change a topic or so. Um, the two things I want to talk about is the course resources and the test and quizzes. The course resources, um, yes, I use the course resources mainly for admin and then if, um, for my lecture support materials. I think some people use the blogs. Um, I'm definitely going to try that in future. Is the blogs, can it, sorry, can you copy from one year to the next, the blog? Okay, I'll not definitely do the blogs. I've used um, uh, stuff I read on the internet or on newspapers that pertains to my theory um, that would push the students up to a higher level of application. I've given them um, that to read via the announcements, but I think that can most definitely go better with a blog. Um, then the two biggest drivers or problems I had was fees must fall, um, and that pushed quite a bit of um, the theory to just take some of the normal lectures and put that on uh, Ikamba, but not, yeah, we have the limitation of this is a residential university, not online lecture course, so there's limitations to that. But the other big problem was with the practical, the students weren't on the same level um, with computers. Some students were had access to computers in high school and some didn't have access to computers in high school. Uh, which posed a problem in class because you had to start at a certain level, you only have a certain amount of weeks, so you can't start from scratch and try to build everybody up from there. Um, so these were the two big drivers for um, the e-teaching in my course. Then we have the blooms, right? Our remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, and creating. I'm not aiming in second year for creating and evaluating yet, but <coughs> I thought I'd link what I do to this. Video clips and lectures, I've split like that, more or less. Not exactly, but more or less. If I give them a video clip on the basic theory, um, then I save a lot of time in class in terms of prepping them on basic. Video clips are limited to five to ten minutes each, so it's not too long. They can watch it on their cell phones, it is uploaded on a Canva. I ask them to do that as pre-reading or pre-watching before they come into class. But that works for theory, well, more for practical, because if I come into a class and I want to say, today we're going to talk about data tables and look at the application thereof, they wouldn't know what the data table is, but if they watch the video clip, they know what 
what a data table is, they know the basic technique of it, they know how I'm applying it. So I can quickly recap on that, which is the overlap over there. I recap on a basic and then I show them a more difficult example. And in class I've found then that I can do, instead of one basic example and maybe one difficult example, I can straight go into a difficult example and even a more difficult example. Five minutes recap and more difficult. So I've saved a lot of lecture time, face-to-face uh, -face lecture time by doing the video clips over there. Um, on the assessment side, the formative assessments, the basic assessments, try and cover the same as the video clips. And then the formative, there is more formative assessments on a higher level, also just to check if they're up to the right standard. But the summative assessments is automatically a little bit more difficult. Um, right, then I use e-tools mainly in the blue blocks which reduces all oh, the man hours, the woman hours we need in this course is mainly on lectures and then on the summative assessments. Um, I do all my assessments on a computer. The man hours there is just the marking and the obviously setting up of the question pools. Um, but as you build it, as each year progress, every year you add more questions and you're sitting with a nice, well, it reduces the man hours a lot. Um, yeah, so that's mainly those two. To add a few video clips, to add more formative assessments in response to what the students need every year. It's just a little bit of time that, you, that I need extra. But I must say that I found that since fees must fall and I've, we've all been pushed, or some of us have been pushed, to add more e-teaching tools to the ECAMVA website. Um, it has reduced my consultation and face-to-face -face time with students by a lot. Um, not the lecture times. I've had managed to increase the lecture level a little bit um, in each lecture so that I managed to cover a bigger amount of work or a higher application level. Um, in lecturing or facilitating than I've had done before because it's easy for the students to go back and watch the basic video clips. Um, they also use it for um, revision purposes. I think if they hear me again and they hear the way I say it, they, it, they remember easily. So that has helped there. Um, yes, that's a video clip. So what I want to focus on is the assessments. Um, I've uh, listened to a lot of people now speak and you guys speak a lot of multiple choice type of questions and that is what Ecumba can mark effectively. But I also use other types of questions because uh, with the Excel and the pastel that I teach, I can't teach on a computer and then assess them on paper. There's a big problem there. I also don't want to give them same take home assessments because then they cheat. They take pictures, they pay somebody else to write their assessment, they sit in groups together and all work together to write the assessments. It just, I want a situation where I, it's a controlled environment, the students sit in front of a computer, they do their thing, they get assessed on what they can do. Um, so I have 200 students, um, three tests a year, two exams a year, and they all sit behind a computer in a controlled environment with invigilators and they write their tests. Um, I can't test all of that on multiple choice. If I go back to this slide, the formative assessments there is mainly multiple choice. Um, these formative assessments and the summative assessments are not. They are other types of questions. I'll get to that now. Um, we can cater, UWC can cater for 200 students sit in one sitting. You don't have to switch them over. They can all write the same paper. Um, we can, UWC can deal with more, but there's a bit of politics around the who controls what venue and you don't have access to that, but okay. Um, there are controls in Ikamba to maintain the integrity. One of the risks is that a student would go into a venue, log into the computer, start with their assessment, decide that they don't know what to do with these type of questions, log off, go to the library or to their restroom and finish it there. 
So what I do, there are two controls in a Canva that can cover that. The one is if you put the MAC addresses, the computer's addresses on the, in the settings, I, that has not worked for me before. Um, what I do is I give them a password. So each session has their own test. I stagger the sessions. One session starts at 9, next session starts at 9.20, 9.40 and so on. The first guys can't leave until the last guys have sat. Um, I give them a password. So there's four, let's say, four different tests. Uh, the first guy sit, I give them a password. The moment everybody's logged in, um, I change the password, but I don't give them the changed password. I give it to the invigilators. So that if the student gets kicked out, the invigilator can put in the password without the student seeing. So they can't leave and come back or leave and um, write in the restroom. Uh, and then I am at all the sessions. So I have my phone in my pocket, and that's one day where my health app doesn't complain about me running around. Um, yes, so that is the logistics and the admin that can be done. Right, inside the assessment, when I set the assessment, there's of course the passwords. There's only one submission, I don't do two submissions. Um, with the fact that I only, don't only do multiple choice, I do other types of questions, uh, I have to mark it. It cannot mark it. And to do two submissions, the computer cannot determine which one is better because it cannot judge the quality of the answer. So I only have to do one submission, nothing more. And I give them a little bit of extra time for if there's an issue like uh, the computer screen broke or the um, keyboard doesn't work or something IT or technical um, happens, then they can move to another computer or we can make a plan, but we have a bit of time. The downside just is that it kind of cannot, if one student in a session has an issue, you can't extend his time by 10 minutes. You have to extend everybody's time. I have a backup, but that would work for me, not necessarily for anybody else. Um, they do um, a, the test and they do an Excel spreadsheet and they upload the Excel spreadsheet to the test. So if something happens on the ECAMBA test that does not work out, I tell them to abandon the rest of the ECAMBA. They don't answer the Excel on ECAMBA, they answer the Excel just in Excel and upload. That has covered most of the problems. I haven't really had other issues. If I have a serious other issue, I might allow the student to write the supplementary exam or something like that. But no other issues have been. There hasn't been an unsolvable issue yet. Right, then, there are, of course, lots of material in the library that gives you nice ideas on multiple choice questions and how to test theory in this type of scenario. And, in other words, what I'm saying is just, if you just use MCQs, obviously you don't have to just test remembering <laughs> or understanding. You can test application and even analyzing um, if you use it properly. It takes a lot of time to set up, you all know that, but it is possible. Other types of questions that I do use is matching, where you have column A and B, um, match the uh, term to the definition or match the term. I have a lot of uh, chapter on cybercrime, so one of it is I give them a scenario, what I find in the newspapers, what, and then I'll ask what type of cybercrime occurred in this scenario. So that type of thing. It comes, of course, marks MCQs well, marks matching really well. Um, the, I do use fill in the blank type of questions. You can use it for numbers and for words. Um, you can use the asterisk if I have a word uh, question and the answer is create and I'm worried about them writing creating or create. Um, I, the answer I put in is C-R-E-A-T with an asterisk at the end and then Ecamba can accommodate that. Um, but like being an accountant, we often test numbers. And I have accounting students, and one would think that they can handle the numbers. I would ask in a question, for example, um, what is the answer if you had done this type of scenario in the Excel? What is your answer to X, Y, Z? 
please put in the number format and then I'll put in example one two three four comma five six meaning no spaces between the thousands no, no, and they still get it wrong so marking that on a canvas unfortunately the human error is, doesn't cover that <laughs> Okay, they now have short answers. I'll give them something to do in Excel and I'll ask them to copy and paste the formula. Uh, if formula or a D sum or whatever. I copy and paste it. It kind of does not mark that at all. Um, hotspot questions is where you give them a screenshot and you ask them to click on the screen. What menu option would you use to do that at all? Um, that works not really that well yet i'm sure it will so i can only use that type of questions in my formative assessments not in my summative assessments because the accuracy there is not great then lastly i use file uploads where the student has the excel spreadsheet they work in it when they're done they upload it to a question um, I use it only for backup purposes, but it is possible. If you have longer questions, in other words, that you want to ask them, that you can ask them to write it in Word, and then upload the Word document to the test. It can, it can be done. It's quite easy to do. Okay. The question if, is if Canva doesn't mark this, who does? And the answer is me. But it is not as difficult as one would think. I'll show you now. Um, if a camber marks it, that's of course wonderful. You don't have to all around a bunch of papers. You don't even have to touch a red pen. I'm sure we're all allergic to that. Um, you don't have to sort the papers. You don't have to add it up and add it up again and add it up again and drive your children to help you add it up again because it's a terrible job. Okay. Um, that is the marking on a camber. That's option one. That's the win. Um, if you have to go out of town, you just take your laptop or borrow a laptop, log into your camera and you get to finish marking. You don't have to carry a box on a plane with you. What I do is I download the test answers. Um, somebody had a screen, and I can show it to you, where you look at the scope or the answers for the test. One of the tabs at the top says export, and it exports your test, or the, all the answers, into Excel. Of course, the nice stats that Ecamba calculates is worthless then, because you're redoing everything, but I'm sure we can work around that. Um, I'll show you how that looks, and then in Excel I use auto filters to mark it. And marking it is wonderful, because you can judge everyone on its own, put in a formula that adds up all the totals, and everything is done. I'll show it to you just now. To give feedback, um, I use a mail merge. I don't know if you know what it is, but it is, uh, I create an email for each student in Microsoft Word. I have my data in Excel. I put the Excel data into Word and I send the emails from Word and each student gets their answers, the right answers, depending on what I set up, their marks, the total marks and comments if I want. <laughs> That helps a lot if you want to, for example, let's say you've marked halfway. We've had a situation where somebody has marked halfway and some of the marks had to get out. So you can only give feedback on half the text, which is not possible on a camera. On a camera, I think it's all or nothing. But if you want to give feedback, if you have a bunch of test questions, for example, in a database, and you don't want the database to leak, you only give the part that you are prepared to give. And it's... Um, possible to do it that way. Um, in the situation two where I mark it separately from a um, this grade book of course is wrong because the marks aren't updated on a But I can export the list and give it to the mass administrator and they import it into mass and that mark is right. Okay. I can show you before we start with questions or before you ask questions. Um, is it under name tags? No, there it is. If you export sorry, the names were supposed to be gone. <laughs> Um, this is it if it is exported, and I've indicated at the top of each column what the type of question. This was, for example, a, 
uh, MCQ. An autofilter in Excel is simply you highlight the headings, you put on a filter, okay, hide the names, the grade marks will be wrong, and on MCQ you can click on the drop down, you select the right answer, let's say that was right, and if the question counted two marks, they get two. Oops, not the accountant's computer, no marks not on. <laughs> and it's marked. The rest, of course, gets nothing because it's wrong. So I go for blanks. And I get a zero. Copy. one marked 200 students <laughs> okay that's multiple choice the rest is a bit harder there's your matching for example it gives the answer in that format the first area was option F then E then B then G if you know your rhyme out of your head that becomes easy to mark four three two and one but that is how hard it is. It's not that. Then short answers, copy and paste. Oh, that's a bit more schleppy. Because you have to expand that. But you can read it and you can agree that within about seven marks, that's fairly easy enough to mark. Like that. There's a fill in the blank, that's what that looks like. So if you have a word that is spelled wrong, it's easy enough to see. 497 numbers, of course, are easy, but if it's a word, you can easily fix that. There's my formulas, short answer, copy and paste. And there's a table fill in the blank. These are not nice to mark, but it's possible. So that's my marking outside of Ikamba. So I can use, that enables me to use a lot of different types of questions in assessments. You can see that much, can you? Uh, apart from MCQs. Still not much, but okay. That's it for me. Thank you very much. My problem is it's essay, type it's essay. Yes. Which is fine, a Canva accommodated that. Uh, the problem was students cut and paste off the internet. You know, they're, they're, is there any way you can block Google or something like that or, you know, to enable, and I'm thinking about your short answers. You know, can they just look that up, or is it too applied to your scenario? And, do you want to answer? In my scenario, it was too applied. Yeah. I, there wasn't yeah. anything that could look up yeah. on the um, But on the longer answers, it might be more difficult. Do yeah. you want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we are, or we will be experimenting in 2019 ah, okay. with a proctoring service. Um, we have uh, done some benchmarking and this is also an, a, uh, me extending an invitation to lecturers that are interested in proctoring your specific exams or tests so that when students do a test on Ecumba, for example, a short answer, even a test quiz, it would lock the browser completely so they wouldn't be able to go anywhere else. And then we also have the extreme cases that we are going to pilot with you that are interested. If it is an exam, it may be counts or you know, it's the final year, etc., then we could have a fully proctored exam where someone, a student would log in. They need to have a webcam. They're either sitting in a venue by themselves and then it would be one-on-one -on -one proctoring where the student would be asked, would have to schedule his exam two weeks in advance, although the integrity I won't get into too much detail now, but basically that there would be another person on the other end um, monitoring 
what the student is doing. And for that is quite extreme, it's eye movements, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have to, um, because we're moving into a different space. We, we are offering, we, you would see that we are offering currently um, fully online programs through the EMS faculty. It's a pilot project where many stakeholders are involved. So these are eight week modules, very intense, and students do not set foot on campus. So how do we make sure that when we issue them the diploma or the certificate, that it is the actual person? Yeah. So these are things that are, are in, in progress or you know in play. And I would really like to invite lecturers that are interested, even as a group, as a pilot, um, to join our pilot basically for this particular prompting service. And then we can make an informed decision if we do go with one or the other. So I hope that answers your thank specific you. question. Any other questions for Lydia? If not, thank you very much for your presentation. We can give another applause.